All right, uh, welcome back uh, to our discussion about using double and half angle identities. In this video, we're going to actually use some um, things that we know. We're going to be given uh, a specific angle, and then we're going to need to find the trig functions of twice that angle. So let's jump in and give that a shot. Okay, so here is an example. We are going to use a double and half angle formulas to find the exact values of trig functions. And when it says exact values, that means no decimal approximations, okay? So let's say I'm given a right triangle here. I'm telling you it's a right triangle even though it's not marked as a right triangle. And I know that I'm given an angle theta, an acute angle theta here, and the opposite side is three, and the hypotenuse is five. And I am tasked with finding the values for sine of two theta, cosine of two theta, and tangent of two theta. Now we can find, we can use decimal approximations um, and we use like uh, our calculator and do an inverse sign to find the measure of theta and then double it and, and then do all that good stuff. But what we're tasked with here is finding the exact values, which means I'm going to need to use those formulas. Okay. So the very first thing I want to do is actually find the three primary trig functions for theta. We're going to find sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent of theta. All right, now sine of theta is easy because we're given the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we can say without a doubt, sine of theta is gonna equal three over five. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is use my Pythagorean theorem uh, and that relationship to find the missing side of this triangle. I can say a squared or three squared plus b squared is equal to c squared or five squared. All right, which means that b squared would equal 5 squared minus 3 squared, which would mean b squared is equal to 16. And in this case, since we're dealing with just a um, distance, b would equal 4. Okay, so if b is 4, that means now I can identify the cosine of theta, and the cosine of theta would be, what, 4 over 5? And the tangent of theta would be, what, yeah, you're right, three over four. Okay, great. Now that I have these things, I can use um, identities, those formulas, and find the sine of two theta, the cosine of two theta, and the tangent of two theta. So let's go to those formulas. We know that the sine of two theta is two times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Okay. Well, let's sub those things in. I know what the sine of theta is. Sine of theta is 3 fifths, so I can sub in a 3 fifths here. And I know what the cosine of theta is. That's going to be 4 fifths, so I'm going to sub that in here. That replaces the whole expression, cosine of theta. And 3 fifths re replaces the whole expression, uh, sine of theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So what we have here is 2 times 3 over 5 times 4 over 5. So now I'm just going to multiply numerator times numerator times numerator and place that over denominator, which here is one, times denominator times denominator. So we should end up with the sine of two theta equaling two times three times four is 24, and one times five times five is 25. 24 over 25. That wasn't too bad. Let's try cosine of two theta. All right, cosine of two theta. Now remember that there were three different formulas. And almost exclusively, you're going to choose to use the cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta formula. And the reason why is it produces for you a um, common denominator every single time. Remember that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the denominators here will be our hypotenuse squared. Okay, That is lovely for us because then we don't have to come up with a common denominator on our own. So again, we're going to replace cosine squared theta uh, with cosine theta, 4 over 5, and square that. And we're going to subtract sine of theta, 3 fifths, 
and square that. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Our cosine theta is 4 fifths and it needs to be squared minus our sine theta is 3 fifths and we're going to square that. So when I square those things, I would end up with 16 over 25 minus 9 over 25. And with the common denominators, it's a piece of cake. We just take 16 minus 9 and place that over 25. That gives us 7 over 25. All right, so now we've got sine of 2 theta, and I've also got cosine of 2 theta. So I now I want to use tangent of 2 theta. Tangent is always a little bit uh, messier, but it's not too terrible. Okay, so let's look at that formula. Tangent of 2 theta is going to equal 2 times the tangent of theta divided by 1 minus the tangent squared of theta. And so I'm going to use this 3 fourths and I'm going to sub it in where I see tangent of theta. And I'm going to put it here, tangent of theta, and then square it. So let's go ahead and sub those in. Okay, there's a lot in here. Just focus on the first thing. 2 times 3 fourths, that's 2 times the tangent of theta. And then 1 minus 3 fourths squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this. The first simplification is 2 times 3 fourths. That's 6 over 4, which is just the same as 3 over 2. Now here, we're just going to multiply the 3 fourths times the 3 fourths and get 9 sixteenths. Now we are going to want to subtract it from 1, so we need a common denominator here. We're going to make that 16 over 16 minus 9 over 16. So we'll end up with 3 over 2 um, divided by 16 over 16 minus 9 over 16. Can you guess what the next thing is going to be? It's going to be cleaning up this denominator. So what would that denominator end up looking like once you clean that up? should end up with um, 7 over 16. So 3 halves divided by 7 over 16. That's the same as 3 halves times 16 over 7. All right, and now you can just uh, multiply this numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Gives us 48 over 14, which then would simplify to 24 over 7. Fabulous. Okay, now another um, kind of shortcut. If you have to find all three, then you don't actually have to go through this process for tangent because remember that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So if I know that 24 over 25 is the sine of 2 theta, and if I know that 7 over 25 is the cosine of 2 theta, I can say without a doubt that the tangent of 2 theta would be 24 over 25 divided by 7 over 25, and then just simplify that. They both have a denominator of 25, which means I can multiply the, the whole things by 25 and just get 24 over 7, which is a lot simpler than this process. Now, if you're tasked with just finding the tangent of 2 theta, you're probably going to want to go ahead and use this formula. But if not, then go ahead and use the sine of 2 theta divided by the cosine of 2 theta and just justify your answer that way. Okay.